Allah na all you see a gwan. Ja comes first. You know we do. Allah na all you see a gwan. Ja comes first. Rookie dia tell them say. Member that the body's engineer. Yo, this is Peter Morgan from Morgan Heritage talking to you. I'm here making no sense all about Rookie D. Saying, keep it locked. It's hot. Peter said that. Rookie, blaze it up. This is Rookie D from the Morning Ride crew on 89.5 CIUT. I'm sitting here live and direct with Peter Morgan, the lead singer from the legendary Roots Reggae band Morgan Heritage. Your debut album's on the way entitled The Undeniable Truth. Why did you choose that name? Why I call it that is because the songs that I've written, you know, everyone can relate to it. You know, whether it's a love issue, whether it's a social issue, whether it's a, a conscious spiritual uh, issue I reference. You know, when you hear the song and hear the storyline of the song, you would just say, you know, it's the truth. You know, it's and it's and, and it's an undeniable truth where I don't, you know, write like fictional things or things that make it seem pretentious or whatever. Everything I write, someone in the world can relate to it and say, Jano, I, I'm life that. You understand? There's someone who is going through that experience at the moment. You know, I like to write songs that people can relate to on a daily basis. You know, where it's it's a reality of people's lives. One thing I love about your music is that each song is like to me it's like a it's like a journey you bring us on like a like a roller coaster you know see it, you start see it. from the beginning see it. take us up a level you know <laughs> the dynamic range is 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 heavy on absolutely that. give thanks i want to ask you um how do you put together your song like what's your process i mean it comes in different ways you know people always ask that and you know it's it's really not like a set program to say this is how it's done you know because you can't predict ja and the inspiration it can't come anyway. You can't be in a bathroom, you can't be on a plane. You can be sitting in the airport or in your house in the bed watching the television. You know, it's just different ways. And either you can write a song, get an inspiration, write a song, put it down, vibe it on the guitar, write on the guitar, or when a man send you a track. Nine times out of ten, when I get a tr- when I get a track from a person, it's like the, the track talks to me. I don't force anything. Okay. Sometimes I'll sit on a track for weeks and I'm not gonna force it, I'm not gonna force it because you say, Boy, I'm gonna put out the me and I'm need that tune. You say, alright, that's what I can do. Now I promise you now. I may turn on the track and as soon as I turn it on the vibe hit me right and I start recording right there and then. Sometimes I get a track and it doesn't hit me right away. So I just let it sit. So you know, I let it sit. I, I yeah, you know what I mean? Some of us vibe with it. We spoke a bit about how you used to record back in the days on two inch tapes and how things are easier now with, with Pro Tools and, and softwares and stuff. Yeah. Is there any way where your 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 ways of writing music easier? Like do you use your Blackberry? Do you use Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Things? I mean even this little recorder here, I got one of these. You know, where it just sits in my bag. Where I, anywhere I am I pull it out. I've been on a plane already. And the first time it happened on the plane I got an idea and I started singing to it. Just and like when I got to where I was going and I played the idea, I couldn't hear nothing because the, all I was hearing was the plane engine. Oh. And I'm like, what the hell? I'm like, so I learned from that to say, you know, whenever it happens, I got to sing a little louder and keep it a little closer to my mouth because I was just kind of humming the idea. I lost that idea. You know, I got plane, I, plane engines for ideas for that. This is just a more of a personal question for me. But when I hear your voice, I, I want to compare it to to like a flute. Is there any kind of instrument that you that you you would compare yourself to, or the way you sing your singing style? I never thought of that. I I find first it time soft, you, you know, like you know, it just flows. First like time I've ever been asked that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm never, <laughs> that just came out. Of, that just came out of my head. <laughs> That's a good question. That's a good question. Anything I like never guitar, thought of comparing anything. myself to a, to an instrument or wow, that's deep. <laughs> because I mean, most times if I'm writing, it's either with the piano or the guitar. I relate to the guitar and the piano a lot. The guitar is easy. You can have an acoustic guitar, whip it out, and just start messing around with chords. Like I play the guitar. I don't know what the hell I'm playing. I couldn't tell you what chord it is. I play by ear, you know. But I know if it doesn't sound right, you know, I, I change it and figure it out. So I play by ear, and I can write on my guitar you know so as a singer songwriter i relate to the guitar but i don't know what to compare my voice to as an instrument 
something to look forward to, I guess. Yeah, I'll think about that one. <laughs> Next uh, time you ask me that, I'll have an answer for that's you. That's cool, that's cool. <laughs> So um, let's start to talk about some of your new songs now. Yeah. You have a new single called Stay Getting High. Stay Getting High, yeah. What's the, the meaning behind that song? It's, it's, you know, a lot of people when I wrote it, they were like, you might need to change the title. And I'm like, why should I change the title? Because everybody doesn't think he's talking about smoking herbs or whatever. And I'm like, that's good. At least they'll have a curiosity to listen to the song. You know, but when you hear this song, you understand that what I'm talking about is getting high on life. You know, it's not about smoking, drinking, doing what kind of drugs or whatever. It's just simply getting high on life and getting high on love. You know, it's a relationship. I also noticed you worked with a lot of different artists too on this new album. You worked yeah. with a producer from Portugal. Yes. Can you speak about yes. that? that must actually, that was, uh, that was that uh, was for his album. Actually, his name is Diego Miranda. He's, okay. a, he's a dance producer, like. Uh, like uh, who, who's this guy? David. David Guetta. Yeah, yeah. Or um, this 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 mouse guy. He's a DJ, you know, and he always wear this big old thing on his head like uh, a mouse, like yeah, a Mickey yeah. Mouse thing. I can't remember his name, but he's a big, he's huge. I was even watching the TV here, and it was showing one of his concerts here in Europe. Um, Danger Mouse. Danger Mouse. Danger okay. Mouse. Very big dance producer. People don't realize how big dance music is, you know. Mm -hmm. And dance music is a like global music where America is just getting into dance music. Like everybody wants to do a dance record in America. But dance music has been a big music globally for ages. Mm -hmm. You know, you talk about Europe, you talk about the Middle East, um, 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 South America, and these places. You know, I mean, it's like huge. Huge. Yeah. So, um, what's heavy? That tune was called Say Yeah, by the way. Yeah, Say Yeah. All yeah. Right. And so, Grams is the one that got me into that because he's been doing dance record, everything is <laughs> Grams is it. Whatever he does, like, yo, Peter, you have to do one with that. You tell me, all right, say it. So he did uh, a few dance records with uh, this guy in, uh, in Paris, um, Big Ali, and okay. which did very good. And he met uh, Diego when he went to uh, Portugal to do a show, I think. And he's been, you know, getting into that arena. So he introduced me to that and they introduced me to Diego and I did a song with him. So it's a nice vibe. That's cool, know? that's cool. I noticed you keep mentioning um, Grams. Yeah, man. Can can we look forward to a, to a comeback? Oh yeah, for sure. Heritage? Yeah, man. Anytime soon? Very soon. That's good. That's Very good. soon. I that's mean, we're, ju we're just finishing a new single, actually. A new Morgan Heritage single, which should be out um, very soon, maybe, That's you know, weeks know. soon. That's good to know. So, you know, we're looking forward to that. Um, when I get back to the U.S., we're going to finish the vocals on it. And that's, that's going to be the first Morgan Heritage record since our break uh, in 2008. Okay. You know, it's just a single, no album yet. So just <laughs> be patient. <laughs> good to look forward to. Yeah. All right, so before I wrap up, I want to know, um, is there any artists that you have not had the chance to work with yet? Ah, there's so many, man. There's so many, you know, and it's just being patient because we've met a lot of artists since we've embarked on these solo journeys. And the, the greatest thing about these solo projects is that we're able to do a lot of different things that we would never do as Morgan Heritage because we will never jeopardize the integrity of Morgan Heritage, the sound, the name are the music. Morgan Heritage is a reggae band, a reggae group, a roots and culture group, and we are true to that. You know what I mean? So you'll never see Morgan Heritage doing a dance record. The most you'll see us do is a, <coughs> a crossover record, an R&B record, because we were born and raised in America. So that is a part of our culture. Right. You know what I mean? And we have records on our albums in the past that give you that straight up American flavor. Mm -hmm. And, you know, but other than that, you know, we're, we're true to reggae music. And that's what we live by as a group, and that's what we defend. But with the solar projects, we're able to do so much different things. You know, Grant's done work with India Ire. Um, he's in, been doing stuff with uh, Anthony Hamilton. Um, just a lot of people that you know we've been talking to that we've been meeting along the way. The dance records that he's done in Europe with Big Ali, the dance record that he's done with Diego, that, that I've done with Diego. And you know so much others. You know we've been in a lot of work with um, Jay Bogot of Hawaii, Polynesian artists working with Fiji. And there's a host of other artists from that region who we've 
um, started working with as well. So we've had a chance to write and produce for other artists, um, collaborate with other artists, and just do a lot of different things beyond reggae music that if it was just Mag and Harry to do, we wouldn't have done it. Yeah. My last question is, do you have anything to say for the youths that's, um, you know, whether they're singing or songwriting or playing yeah. guitar, any youths that just want to get in the business and you know, find, find a, a tough time to keep... keep yeah, going. I mean, it's harder now to break in the music than it was when we did. Very much harder now because you can't set up a studio anywhere. You know, we can, we're, we're in here, we're getting ready to do a recording right here in, in, in my hotel room. You know, 15 years ago, that wasn't even a thought. You couldn't even conceive that thought. You want to do a record, book some studio time. Find yourself in our studio. Now, studios anywhere. You know, mics are just, you know, beautiful. You know, you have plugins that can, you use the worst mic in the world, you add a plugin on it, and you can select it to become any state-of-the-art microphone that you want. True. You know what I mean? So there's so much different things that the music uh, and the industry has provided for us as producers, as songwriters, as, as artists, where, you know, anything goes right now. You know what I mean? There's a lot of songs on the on the radio today that were not recorded in, you know, production big studios. production studios. No, right, right. people do it in them yard, people do it in them bedroom. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Do it in them kitchen. You know what I mean? For and sure. just, you know, you have bands that are launching their albums by, you know, just sitting around their breakfast table. You know, they don't need no big public publicity firm or, you know, no big time budgets or anything. You know, you got a few people that know how to work the internet and that's on your team. You're good. And then you attack the social networks and you get a few advertisements here and there. And it's like, it's driving the majors crazy because they've totally lost control of, you know, the structure of the business. They got them have new artists popping up here and there everywhere all over the place. And it's not like you need for a focus on I want to break in America or I want to break in the UK. You know, wherever your music take you, you follow it. Mm -hmm. Cause the world big. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? True, it's true. not all about just being in on top of the world in America or in yeah. Canada or the UK, which are major first world countries that people would always love to be a, a, a big artist in these countries. But you have to remember, when, you know, you go to places like Africa, there's millions, South America, millions, Caribbean, millions. It's like it's still really and come on, man. Yeah, Every true. time Morgan just go to Africa, our crowd ranges from, <coughs> excuse me, 25,000 to 70,000 people on a regular basis. We've not been to Africa and performed for a crowd less than 25,000 people. And that's not a festival. That's a Morgan Heritage show. show. We alone. Stadium. You know what I mean? We couldn't do that in America. Even you know, Canada. not even Canada. You have to find a little club where you can hold a little 300, max 2,000. Yeah. You know, max. <laughs> you know, and that's if you have big artists. 2, 000, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. 2,000 people, around. when you go, we got Africa, we say, all right, what is show there? So, it's true. That man is like, you go Africa, you say, all right, what is show The sound check. Every time you're driving into a stadium, you know, just imagine the biggest stadium here in Toronto. That's where we play in Africa. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, giant stadium, RFK Stadium in DC. That's where Morgan Heritage plays in Africa. You know what I mean? So. Like I said before in an interview past, I was like, I wouldn't give up my status as an artist in Africa for nowhere else in the world. You know, because it's a, it's a great joy to see the music liberating people just by them hearing it, hearing the songs, because these people don't get artists coming to their countries on a regular basis. Like here in Canada, every week you can expect some show, some something dance, so something, you know, so when them ears say one of them favorite artists are come all the way from Jamaica, or them are come all the way from America or Canada, come it's on. a big thing to them. We've been in performing in Senegal for 65,000 people and people are always say, them work three days for come at this. Wow. They talk about the interior of the country, you know, and Africa, you look at these countries on the map and you think they're small, they're huge. They are huge, you know what I mean? And it's like, even when we flew from, you know, UK to Sierra Leone, I remember looking out the window and when we left from Spain and, and crossed over into African airspace. And it took us longer to get from the tip of Africa to Sierra Leone, which when you look on the map, it looks like a short distance. You know, it looks like it's shorter than from flying from Rome to, to London. 
and it took us forever. And I'm like, Africa, big, you know, man. You know, I remember flying from the Indian Ocean to, uh, from uh, Reunion to another island, Se- um, Mayotte or Seychelles, and we flew across Madagascar. Now, Madagascar is a little island where it's part of the map. Um, and Madagascar is huge, huge, like it almost took almost an hour and a half to go across an island. You know, when you go to Jamaica and you them say, all right, we're descending in Jamaica. 15 minutes you're there from the north yeah, coast to Manly Airport, you know what I mean? <laughs> so it's like, you know what I mean? When you're an island, it's like unbelievable. So, you know, Africa is a great place. And it's a, it's a place where it's unfortunate to see that, you know, black people don't really, in the Western hemisphere, don't really know the value of Africa. And even the Africans at home don't know the value of Africa because all of them are trying to leave Europe. You know what I mean? And every time we go to Africa, we are one of the few black people on the plane. I remember flying from the UK to, to Johannesburg. And Morgan Heritage, we were the only black people on the plane. I swear to you, and we are talking about a 747 double decker plane. Wow. We you know there are hundreds of people. I mean, I said, John no Star, black people have no interest to go out in Africa. You know? Yeah. you know what I mean? So even when we say, you know, you have to talk about people like Isaac Hayes, who's been doing things in Africa, Danny Glover. Um, Jay Z has started doing something. Oprah's doing something. <laughs> but Keys too, yeah. Alicia Keys. Oh, but too. you know, Africa is a great place, man. And it's like, like you say, you know, Africa with its creators. Mm-hmm. There's so much riches there, and you know, you you, you go in a store, you see some jewelry, you see some diamonds, and you say, Yo, may I forget that? We need that, uh, yo, that hat. You know what? That got you for each dessa. And you talk about a little tiny diamond like this where you are pay twenty, thirty thousand dollars for. Like you're losing life for and, oh yeah, yeah. Say, man, and that's been chipped off of a bigger stone. That those who control the business of whatever diamond mining or whatever, probably pay a hundred or two hundred US dollars. For them man they go mine it and find it. For them come back come sell it for millions overseas. You know, it's, it's crazy. That's why I me, mean. I'm not a person where you will see me dressed up in diamonds or flossing like that. I've never been attracted to that. You know, because everything that I that that I like to buy, I think about the labor that it takes to possess this one. Me, I got pay for now. And where the people them get who make this, how much them really earn by making this. You know, so me, I, I'm a very different thinker. You know, you're not going to see me in the latest shoes or whatever. I'm just wear some regular things. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, it's just material things. And I'm not going to spend thousands and, and all this. I mean, I may have enough youth. I may have to think about for them college future and everything. There. You know, I'm rather, if I have money like that, I'm rather buy a house for each of them when they grow old. They don't have to worry about that. I go look it for themselves. You know what I'm saying? Them things they mean more to me than going to spend 10, 20, 30 grand on a bracelet. Are 50, 70, 80 grand pan a bring, are 100,000 on a watch, and sing about it like it's a great achievement. You know what I mean? Come on, bro. You know, come on, man. There's more to life than that, man. You know what I mean? I've been in places where, you know, I've been amongst the, the, the best in the industry. I've seen them all. You know, from hip hop to rap to, you know, you look at the, the rock artists, they're not interested in them thing there. Just t-shirt. And t-shirt work. and a jeans. <laughs> and a converse. How much for a converse? $50? The money in, in that. I remember watching an award show one day. And Kid Rock was the, on the red carpet. And, you know, they're talking to everybody. What are you wearing? Oh, I'm wearing Giovanni. I'm wearing um, Dosh. Come on. I'm wearing Gucci. I'm wearing this. Kid Rock is like, just wearing a t-shirt. He's like, where did you shop? I just came from Target. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, yeah, yeah like that. Really. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, keep it real, man, because, I mean, I understand the media paints this picture where you have to look a certain way. Your audience wants to see you on a certain level. Yeah. You know, I'm like, come on, dude. You kidding me? I see people buying cars. And then I'm saying, that's house money, house man. Easy, easy. You know what I mean? I'm from, a, my family is too big. You know, I'm from a family of 30 siblings. You know, me and my brother, them, we have bully for you. I mean, can't just, I think, pan, say, boy, if me achieve this amount of earnings, I'm going to just 
floss out them way there. Me know too much people at Jamaica suffer. Me know too much youth at Africa where I suffer. For me, for comfortable, na myself, sit down na my house. I know say me have a million dollar vehicle sit down na my driveway. And a half a million dollars, you have about eight vehicles. So when you calculate that, you have about almost five million dollars. Worth a vehicle, I sit on a driver where you can't drive. Mm -hmm. You don't even have the time to drive it because of how much you are traveling, how much show you have to do. Mm -hmm. So when you really look upon it, and by the time you don't travel, that way you just pay for out of style. Mm -hmm. So you want to trade it in for the latest something model. Else. So you always well, chase well, something well, that doesn't mean nothing. True, true. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. But to each his own, you know what I mean? I see life for more than what it's worth. You know, and a lot of people just want to be rich to have the latest fashion. You know, fashion come and goes. Fashion never remains the same, you know. But the blood will run through your vein from the day you're born till you grow old. And the same blood that I travel through, you know. It may get, you know, infected with this and that over the years, you know. You get a common cold, you, know, so you catch a little thing, you, know, so you catch a, but I just, you're the same man. Same, same, same thing. You know what I mean? The only thing we just get older. We don't go out of style. <laughs> you know what I mean? We are human beings. A man can look at you and say, yo, you're out of style, king. Now we talk about me there, we're the same way. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> that's a very good answer. I love that answer. That's a, I love that answer. Yeah, because, you know, for real. I really talk, answer. man, and that's how I think. <laughs> You know, that's why I'm just a laid back person. You know, like me and Grams, we're the total opposite. <laughs> total opposite. Like me, I'm just chill, easy. Grams, I'm half out there, and I love him for that. Because mm -hmm. as an artist, you have to have that attitude as well. I don't have it. Mm -hmm. So I consider him having it for all of us. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> from Yam and Chan Grams' name, somebody soon asks for me. You know, if Grams did it, he would tell me, say, yo, that's somebody I asked you. So, you know what I mean? It's cool and I, and I love it. I love I love it. Like he and I are like best friends, you know, me and my brother. So, you know, it's like we couldn't be the same thing. You know what I mean? And we, we're on tour. He's like, yo, please, we can go buy this. And I said, no, Grams. You know what I'm saying? Yo, man, I have to buy this. And he buy it. I'm saying, Grams, that look nice still, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you, know cool, you know what I mean? <laughs> so we're good, man. It's just our vibes. Cool. It's just our vibes, you know? So for your fans, is there is there some contacts or any links that you want to give for the fans that want to keep in touch with you? Yeah, no. Yeah, for us work with the Twitter thing. I'm still a try learning because I'm not really a social network person. So you do your own Twitter? I try. Okay. I just added I you try. earlier this morning. Still. Yeah, I you try. Like, I've, I've, I'm in a habit where there's a few people I'm following, and if they do say something that's interesting to me, I retweet it. Mm -hmm. So a lot of my fans know me, and they say, all you do is retweet. Why don't you ever tweet? I'm like, tweet what? <laughs> say what? You know what I'm saying? What I'm do you want hotel. me to say? <laughs> I'm in a hotel. I'm in the studio. You know this already. Yeah, yeah. Why do you want me to keep saying the same things over? But you have some people where they like to talk and it's a good tool for them because sometimes if phone I go off and I say, what is now? And you look at it and it's like, these people always have something to say. Them always want people to know what I do. I'm having a Starbucks coffee. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I just left the bathroom. <laughs> you know? Mr. Diddy tweets something, I need to get out of this traffic ground so I'm gonna bleep myself. You know, I'm like, okay, did I really need to know that? <laughs> like, what do you wanna know about me? I'm an artist, I make music. When I have a new record, I'll tell you. Mm -hmm. You know, That's other it. than that, I'm a normal human being just like you, I got a personal life. I have people that I have to protect in my personal life. So, we mm -hmm. can't just out there like that. You know what I mean? I'm a family person. A lot of these artists, they're not a family. I just, them alone and them bridging or whatever, so anything goes. Mm -hmm. You know, me can't do that. True, you know true, what true. I mean? I have a daughter who I got asked me, Daddy, what was that? Or who are you talking to? You know, mm -hmm. I have a little girl, my, my daughter. I talked to her on Skype and she's like, this was when I was in Italy last year. A picture came on the internet with me looking like I'm kissing this girl. Okay. And, and all I was doing was like releasing off of an embrace of a friend. You know, so it was a compromising picture. She gets on the Skype, who is that you're kissing? Oh, I'm like, huh? what? <laughs> what? I see you kissing some lady on the, on the computer. Oh, like, uh, I'm like, you see? This is how people get in trouble. Yeah, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Easy. Uh, just like that. Just like you that. know what I mean? People, I, I, there's an artist that I look at and I admire him, like Akon. Akon blew up, biggest thing in the world. And after that incident 
that happened with him and the girl on stage in Trinidad. It's like everything changed about Akon, his whole perspective of how he carries himself as an artist, you know, the things he involves himself. Like, no, you, you, you can't say Akon no way. You know, and when you do see him in some big elite thing, because him begin to take the whole thing about his, his celebrity seriously. Because you can call somebody on stage and you don't know if he's underage. And you just have to hear a show, you know. Mm-hmm. But people, millions of people are entertaining you now. And you don't know how each people is perceiving your, your performance. Mm-hmm. Some people may be offended, some people may love it. Everyone have a different opinion. That's why when you see people on Facebook and Twitter, you get to see what kind of people in the world. You know, because when we demons for self as Bridget and Session, we only know each other. But there's millions of people, you're talking about billions of people in the world. Everybody has the same thing, Bridget. True, true. You know what I mean? You have murderers out there, you have pastors, you have firemen, you have teachers, lawyers, you have doctors, you have just regular people who work nine to five, that those are the people that make the world go round. You know, it's not the celebrities or the, the billionaire bosses or whatever. It's the everyday people we're gonna do these jobs, these truck drivers where I drive 15, 16, 17 hours to deliver food your gas or your food in your supermarket. You don't know where it come from. You know how hard a man for labor to make them tomato they grow or that cabbage they grow. Sometimes we watch um, these programs from Discovery or History with these programs called How It's Made. I love that show. And when you really sit down and say, where people have forgot you to make things that we go crazy over to go buy in the store. Mm-hmm. You don't know they are. Something simple like an elevator I was watching the other day. The amount of mechanics it Come takes on, to go man. up and down and it's unbelievable. Safely, you know? And all you do, you walk in this building, push your button, push your button. jump in the elevator, you're going up. That's you know I think say, yo, what did that cable you snap? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, you know I think nothing, you're going up 75 flights of, of mm-hmm. elevator. And we'll just put our trust in these things and mm-hmm. don't expect, even think twice about expect it. Expect to get there, yeah. Yeah, and expect, expect to get yeah, there. And if you come in and you see a thing say, elevator out of service, you you're pissed off. You get mad. Yo, you mean if you get mad, then it reach where uh, Finland with you, man. <laughs> we come in at the hotel, the man them say, the elevator now go work from 12 o'clock to 8 a.m., midnight to 8 a.m. And we have to leave to go to the show at midnight. So everybody's racing to the elevator to try to get those here before it cut off. And we're like on the 10th floor, right? 10th mm. floor, bro. We happen to make it. We reach home after the show at four o'clock. Elevator now work. So everybody have to walk up. Wow. 10 flights of stairs. And we are leave six o'clock in the morning. So you have to walk back down. With your luggage. Oh. I'm, I'm, I remember when you are touring and you have some big bag in there. You can imagine you go down 10 flights of stairs with them luggage and them gear there. And you have a general star. And we take it for granted the use of an elevator or an escalator. Mm-hmm. A serious things, man. But go on about the interview, yeah, man. Yeah, the interview is <laughs> deep. Man. I love it. I love it. I love it. So that's yeah. pretty much the end of it still. I just want to wrap it up with the contacts for the people that we Yeah, have, I have I Twitter. Like is at Peter Music. And the name is spelled P E E T A H. Okay. Music M U S I C. Okay. And Facebook, I think it's the same thing. Facebook.com slash Peter Music. I think the website's the same too. Yeah. Peter no, the website, music. my website is just new. I just finished it. It's called I am Peter.com. I am P E E T A H.com. I am Peter.com. So anywhere between Facebook, Twitter, um, the website, <laughs> and my YouTube is uh, YouTube dot com slash peter tv p-e-e-t-v okay. so you can't find me anywhere there hit me up the twitter i'll answer you back because that's personal to me it comes right to my phone you know the facebook it's i'm still trying to learn facebook man i just <laughs> you know technology yeah cool. but twitter and youtube i'm, I'm good on that because i love youtube because i go on it and i watch youtube more than i watch tv sometimes you know, because if I hear, if I see something on TV, or I hear about it, I see somebody tweet it or whatever, I go on YouTube and research catch the footage. You, and, yeah, catch up on it. Latest news, latest sports, and you know, just Can't enjoy skip life a beat. with it. No, no it's not. No, yeah, it's not. <laughs> straight. Cool. Anything else you want to say to to Canada or the yeah, world? Yeah, man, just you know, I appreciate the love that you've been giving us on these solo projects, Peter Project, Gram's Mojo, Yuna, Laza. 
you know what I mean? And you know, Morgan Heritage, we plan to give you some new music very soon, so get ready for that. Love, love, love. Yeah, respect. Respect, Prince. Last year, I love it.